Absolutely. Hi, guys. How are you today? Doing great, Good thanks. things. How about you? Good, good. Katia Woods with the Philadelphia Tribune. Um, as I was doing my research with this new show, I loved what you said, which was I wanted, which was you wanted to create a show where you saw yourselves because you grew up watching the Disney shows and they had, you know, Mulan and Hercules and you knew all the songs and you wanted to create something like that for young black and brown kids representing Africa. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, I think it's just right from when I was a kid, I've wanted to make video games. I wanted to make animation, comics. I've been drawing comics since I was like five. So it, it wasn't so much about the representation per se, but it was just, if I'm creating, I'm going to create what makes sense to me and what I know. I was born and bred in Lagos, Nigeria. So if I'm telling a story, the characters are going to be typically um, from my place, unless I'm telling a completely fictional story that has, you know, maybe monsters or whatever. But the point is we, we as storytellers, we tell African stories. That's what our company does. And Hamid is from Uganda. Ziki and I are from Nigeria. And we have a team of storytellers from all across the continent. So we tell African stories. And what, what I said in that vi video, I was talking about how I got introduced to other cultures through things like Mulan and Hercules. I got introduced to Greek legends for the first time through Disney's Hercules. So I feel like the same way people can get introduced to Nigerian culture through consuming what we create, get introduced to Ghanaian culture, Ugandan culture, and so on through the stories that Kugali creates. Which I think is a great point of entry because a lot of what we learn here in the West and in, in America is very construed, right? That Africa is poor or now we think everybody is an Afrobeats artist. There's no medium in between. And I love that you make, uh, yeah, it's sad but true. <laughs> I love that you um, create this world where she comes from wealth, she comes from well-established. And a lot of people don't know, people like that do exist in Africa. Talk about why that was important to have this young girl grow up in a world where she is privileged, where she has things, where she isn't necessarily suffering or any other trope. Well, I think that we, authenticity is incredibly important in terms of our storytelling ethos. And ultimately with Iwaju, our intention is to showcase the breadth of Lagos. And as you've alluded to, there are harsher realities that exist in Lagos and other parts of Africa. Although I would say that it's not just limited to the continent of Africa. I think these things exist all over the world. All over the world, there's poverty, there's crime, um, but there are also many beautiful things as well. And as you've alluded to, I think many of, of the stories we see centered on Africa never really showcase its, its beauty. So we wanted to tell a balanced story that showcased the breadth of the Lagosian and to a larger extent, African experience. And there are many, many wealthy people that, that exist within within. Africa, many, many wealthy people that exist within Nigeria, within Lagos. So it would not be an authentic Lagosian story if we didn't have people like Tola and her family that, that exist there. And I think one thing that's unique is a lot of the upward social mobility that happens. You know, we have someone like Tunde who comes from relative poverty and is able to become extremely successful. This is something that happened so much with our parents' generation, I mean, specifically mine and and, and, and Solu. So this is really just the, the Lagos experience. Yeah, I mean, we literally, this, Ziki and I grew up on the island and we have ha we have gone to school with people who maybe grew up on the mainland. So it, it's, it was not so much about, oh, um, let's just show that Af Africans can be rich. When you're born into, let's say, a certain level of wealth or privilege, as a kid, you're not conscious of the fact that your parents are rich. 
you, you just you go to school everyone is in the same class as you so you think this is normal this is what everyone everyone has the same experience but you become an adult and you start meeting people from other places so i think it's just it was just telling us we, we were just telling an authentic story about where we are from and the island and the mainland all of that is real and it's part of our lived experience Besides, you know, giving young people a new heroine to cheer for and to, you know, um, to enjoy, what else do you want people to take away from this series? Because, you know, like you said, as you're putting a lot of yourselves, of your country, of your heritage into it, what else do you want young people or just families as a whole as they're watching this to take away from the series? I'll say... The powerful thing with stories is they shape the way we see the world and our understanding of the world. So at the moment, generally in the whole world, we kind of understand the Western perspective. So there are certain things that happen in the West where even if they're good or bad, you just understand, you're like, okay, that's a American thing. That's a British thing. And you kind of don't judge it right away. Whereas in Africa, there's not been as many stories from any part of Africa that kind of dive deep into it enough to where people have an understanding of the African experience and Africa and kind of way of life. So a lot of things which are weird in Africa are kind of judged as good or bad very quickly instead of looking at it from the cultural perspective or what makes it what it is. And telling this story out there, we hope everybody in the world can get to understand, uh, specifically for this story, Lagos, Nigeria, and really get to understand the culture and see the things that make Lagos, Lagos. There are things which are clearly bad, but there are things which are nuanced when you, when you add the cultural layer on top of it. So that's one of one of the big things we want people to get. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with the series. And I can't wait for young people to be able to enjoy it with you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Cheers. Cheers.